Good morning, guys. Um, public service announcement. This is going to be emotional. Don't worry, I already have my Kleenexes. But, um, I woke up this morning and I popped on Facebook and Christina had watched Grey's Anatomy and said, oh my God, the letters to Alex. So I had to watch Grey's Anatomy then this morning because I've been waiting to find out what the hell happened to Alex. Then I got off of, or I stopped watching it and so many things in that TV show reminded me of Shanann and I've had a lot of people ask me how do you do it how are you so strong how would you stop grieving I didn't stop grieving I grieve for her every day then I got on Facebook again to check messages and um, somebody had commented on pictures from us in Arizona. Shannon and Dana, thank you. <laughs> because uh, and like I said, I've had a lot of people are rambling again like I always do, but I've had a lot of people ask, how do you do it every day? And then I was laid here thinking, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm okay. Um, I do it every day because she pushes me. We don't talk about her like we should openly because people had so many conspiracy theories or whatever about everything that happened and they still do and all of them can go straight to hell and I decided to go live and talk about it because I miss her every day I know she's with me And we should remember her for what she was and what she is and what she continues to do. And the reason I decided to go live this morning and talk about it was because we watch her videos all the time. We go back and look at her pictures and remember the person that she was and is to us. And I say was and is because... She's still with us. She's still pushing us. She said she wanted to leave her mark on this world, and she is. <laughs> She's doing it through all of the people that she loved and cared about. <laughs> Here I am bawling like a baby. Um, I've never told anybody the story of what Shadan was to be. A lot of people thought that we met through Thrive, and that is not how we met. Her mom was my boss, or I was her mom's boss. I was Sandy's boss. And that's how we met. <laughs> and she tried really hard to get us to be friends when she lived here. And Shadan and I wanted really nothing to, to do with each other. Because, um, Sandy was pushing it. And then Sandy and Frank moved back to North Carolina. And Sandy messaged me one day and said, if Shadan needed help, we'd tell her. And I said, yes, just tell her to call me. And I didn't realize at the time what that phone call or that text message, I think it was a text message, was going to entail or what it was going to turn into. Prior to Shanann's passing, I was going through a lot with my 12-year-old daughter. And she suffers some from some mental health challenges. And Shanann was there for me. She helped me through it. <laughs> 
She helped me be a better mom. She helped me not go crazy with what was going on. And she helped me be okay with the outcome. My 12-year-old daughter does not live with me. She lives with her grandparents on her dad's side because of what happened. She was unable to be in my home anymore um, because it was safer for her and for everyone else. And Julie, if you watch this, I love you and you're an amazing child. And you know your mommy would do anything for you. But she doesn't live with me. I see her all the time. We talk all the time. We visit. But she's where she needs to be, especially with what I'm going through right now. I 100% believe everything happens for a reason. But Shanann helped me through that time. And all it was was a text message asking me to help her. She needed help with the girls for something. And because of it, we became really good friends. And then <laughs> I got thrown in the mix. Um, so, everybody says that I'm her hero. She was mine in my time of need. And she continues to be. Because I can tell you, <laughs> whether you believe in spirits or anything like that, she gives me signs all the time. After she passed, um, she shows us that she's here rooting for us and letting us know that things are going to be okay. Um, but she tells me every morning, get your ass up. This is not how we're going to get our goals met because Nicholas, the other day, it was really funny. We drove past, uh, where we would go to go to her house. We drive past there like on a daily basis. It's one of the main roads out of out of Firestone. And I asked him, but I don't know why I'm sharing all this with you guys, but I am. Maybe it's my form of therapy. Um, <laughs> but I asked him, I said, do you think I would be where I am in my Thrive business if Shanann was still here? And he said, no, Mom, you'd be further. And I said, why would I be further? And he said, because Shadan would let you settle. She'd push you harder. She would ask you every day, what's our goal today? What are we going to achieve today? And he was right. Like, I am my own worst enemy 90% of the time. We all are. Um, we have goals and we make excuses. And we want things in life. And we find the easier way out. Because we're scared of what we can actually accomplish. I don't know if that makes sense, but in my mind it does. <laughs> because we are. We're our own whisper to be 95% of the time. Um, and we, we do. We fight what we know we're capable of because it scares us sometimes. And I watched... Grey's Anatomy this morning. I don't know why. It's thanks to Christina. And then I saw something of Shanann pop up. And it was almost like she was speaking to me saying, Stop it. Stop. <sighs> Feeling sorry for yourself. Because we do all the time. And I don't feel sorry for myself in the sense of like, Oh my god, I got cancer. There's a reason I have cancer and I know that. It's a lesson either I'm supposed to learn or somebody else is supposed to learn from it. I feel like God is using me to teach myself or others something about it. Maybe make more awareness. Who knows? But there's a reason why I got cancer. And there are a reason why so many people have been brought into my life. I told somebody the other day, nobody will be ever, ever be able to fill her shoes. So she just keeps bringing me little bits and pieces of her. <laughs> Because she was like a force to be reckoned with. And oh, she, she just, I can't even tell you, like, she was so vibrant and loving and outgoing and caring and 
such an amazing mom. She's like a sister I never had. Which says a lot, because I have two sisters. I don't know who to talk to them. <laughs> I'm a... I have seven brothers and two sisters, and I talk to maybe like three of them. It's sad, and it's a choice that I've made, but it's the stuff that's happened in my past that a lot of people don't know about. So, anyways, side topic. But we all have purposes, is what I'm trying to get at. And we all fight ourselves 90% of the time. Um... And we lose people in our lives and we want to give up because we've lost them and we don't know how to go on. And I had someone message me the other day and she's recently lost her best friend. She died, not, she died suddenly. She didn't die from like a tragedy, but she died suddenly. And she asked me, how do you do it? How did you get past the grief? And you never do. Where's my daddy? <laughs> See, her daddy's not here. He went to work, baby. Why he went to the work? Because he, he has to work. Well, I sit on the tissue. You want to sit on my tissue? You want to sit on my lap? Okay. <laughs> um, you never get past the grief. You don't. <laughs> I've lost a lot of people in my life. And some hurt more than others. Because of the situation. Um, but... you never get past the grief you just when you you think you're starting to something happens or reminds you or hits you like a ton of bricks and it brings you back to before it all happened and I'm not almost done with cancer thanks Debbie but I'm not <laughs> I'm almost done with this round of mm. chemo um I have two more weeks and I have another year to a year and a half before I'll be able to ring that bell. And I know I'll ring that bell, but it's going to be a long road. It'll just get better after the next two weeks because it won't be as harsh as the last two weeks have been. Um, but my point is, is that you never get past the grief and you never know when it's going to strike you or hit you. Or when you're going to have a moment. My grandmother. And I'm not just grieving one person. Shit, I'm grieving. Fuck. Sorry for the cussing. Um, I'm grieving several people. Shanann and the girls and Nico. And then. After she passed. My grandmother that raised me. Which was like my mother. From the time I was a baby. She passed that December, so they died within five months of each other. That was a hard pill to swallow, because they both were my people. I talked to them every day, and they're both gone. And I know that they're not, like, gone, gone, because I still talk to them. But the grief never stops. It doesn't. And you just have to find the little things that keep you pushing like this. This little thing pushes me every day. And Jackson and Nicholas and Juliana. And I know I'm sitting here crying. I'm completely fine. I'm just, it's emotional to talk about. And it's hard and we don't talk about it. We probably should talk about it more. Um, but I just wanted to tell everybody like grief doesn't stop it doesn't stop hitting you it doesn't go away people Mom. think because i show my smiling face Mom. on facebook that i don't cry Mom. or i don't miss her <laughs> i miss her all the time i miss her every day i have little reminders oh all the time Mommy. and i miss my grandmother and i miss my grandfather and i know they're all up there together <laughs> waiting <laughs> But I'm not going to meet them for a very long time again and give them hugs because there's a purpose as to why everything happens. So it's okay to cry and it does. It cleans the soul. You're very right. Um, 
But after, I don't know why, after watching Grey's Anatomy this morning and then seeing that on Facebook, I felt I needed to just tell people, like, you're stronger than you ever think you are. You're your own driving force. <laughs> um, and believe in yourself. Believe in what you're capable of and what you can do. And I should take my own advice. I know I can see her, hear her in the back of my head right now. Listen to yourself. Um, because you... Sometimes you just need to let it out. You do it's hard. It's hard to talk about. But I've also learned it's harder to keep it on the inside because it could cause more harm than good by locking it all down and not letting it out and not talking about it. And we all lose people and it's hard and we don't understand sometimes the way or the why or the how. But there's a plan. I believe that. Yes, I have lots of stuff I should dance, Peggy. Um, her parents were very, very nice and blessed me with lots of stuff from Shanann. I have lots of stuff to remember them by, so. And you're right, Barbara, you don't know how strong you are until you have the choice and you have to make the choice to be strong. So... I just wanted to, I actually talked to her parents yesterday, I talked to Sandy and Frank all the time, to come on here and say, like, it's okay to cry, it's okay to grieve, it's okay to continue to grieve, and you probably will if you lose somebody, um, it's okay to get mad and angry and upset about a situation, but you also have to make choices to move forward. I have never asked myself or God, why? Why did you give me cancer? Because I believe it's a lesson. I sometimes wonder how much more I can handle. But I believe everything happens for a reason. And I don't know the reason as to the why yet. And I may never know. You may never know the reason to the why as to something happened. Because it may not be your lesson to learn. But I do believe that we're, we're here to teach each other things. Um, so, hey Georgia, how was Paris? Sorry, that was a squirrel. Uh, <laughs> I hope you had an amazing time. Um... Her parents are doing the best that they can with the situation. They're amazing people and they're doing the best that they can. And I love them both very much. Um, so, here one of my other rambly videos. But I wanted to pop on and just say it's okay to grieve. And we may not know what's going on or the why. And I keep repeating myself. And I also kind of had an epiphany because I've been struggling a little bit. And I know that I'm what's holding me back. As funny as that sounds. Maybe this is a way of her, like, making me be accountable to myself. Because I know I'm what's holding me back. <laughs> right, Melissa? No more Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> and... I could do better. <sighs> so, thank you for hopping on, all of you, and watching me ball my eyes out this morning. Um, I hope this helped somebody. I don't know if it made sense. I appreciate everybody that, that supports and loves and reaches out and prays for me and my family because prayer is a phenomenal thing um, 
it should end. Just know that I know you're there. A lot of us do. We miss you dearly. But we know you're moving mountains. We know you're working your magic. And we know you're helping a lot of people. So. I love you, Shadid. <sighs>